named as Channel on High End Radio, powered by Sickness. Holler back. Hustle for your last name, not your first. High End Radio, nigga. On the Sickness Network. <laughs> High End Radio, you on the air. Who's this? Oh, this is Dave Barris. What's happening? Hey, what's good with it, big homie? How you doing? Everything's everything, man. It's out here working. Yes, indeed you are, man. We, I mean, this man here needs no introduction, man. It's our, it's our pleasure and our honor to have you on the show, man. Um, what you been up to? You know, just trying to build an uh, independent empire, you know, funded by me, and just keep bringing people good taste and good quality content. You know, music, fashion, art, all those different things, liquor, just what I got to do it myself, that kind of thing. And right now, my main focus is this Dame Dash Studios, uh, dot com network, my version of Netflix. Uh, you know, uh, I've made a lot of movies and I've been making a lot more. Uh, you know, I've been creative, I've been directing uh, movies like uh, Two Honorable and Los Siders and Paul's Mixed Nuts Comedies, and I needed a platform to showcase these things without having to go through a middleman, you know, and Netflix is cool and the theater is good too and iTunes is great, but I feel like they can get it directly from me. And, um, you know, I've had all this content and I just really needed the platform and our man JT from the Bay Area built his Traflix, uh platform and he actually helped me out with mine and gave me the technology to do the same. So, you know, I'm giving a subscription model right now just so whoever really likes my content and independent minds that think alike that, you know, appreciate what I'm doing, they could just get it directly from me. And uh, that's how we're doing it. And I think that's the I think that's the wave subscription. So, boom, like you said, no middleman, straight cutting to the chase. Well, you know, because of the internet and because of uh, the way technology is, you can have a direct relationship with your consumer. So for a long time, you know, the other guys made us believe we needed them to get to the masses, but we really don't now. So now that that's happening and people are like-minded and thinking that way, it's always been in my mind on how to build it and how to do it, but I just, you know, making the content and building the platform is too much. So like I said, I got the technology now and I have the content and that's just about the people to support, really, at least people that believe in the things that I believe in. Indeed, indeed, man. Salute to that. Now, uh-huh. as, 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 long, as well as movies, you got the liquor brand going. <clears throat> Tell us a little something about that. Are you still rocking with the Armandale brand? Uh, nah, I'm not, Armadale was a while ago. I didn't own that 100%. But, you know, Dusko Blue is a white wine, a Riesling. Um, and also have Dusko Whiskey that's coming out. That's over that's, that's over in Spain. It's actually on the um, boats right now. And, uh, you know, that's going to hit the marketplace. So, really, everything I was doing before, but I had a whole bunch of partners and, you know, a lot of people with a lot of different agendas. And I felt like, you know, I wasn't working for me. I was working for everybody else and being exploited. Now it's the same thing, but it's independently owned and financed by me. And, you know, it's a rough fight being independent, but it's, it's well worth it. Freedom is priceless. Yeah, that did. A lot of blood, sweat, tears. Uh, you find out who's who. Yeah, always, always. Definitely. You know, part of being an entrepreneur is signing on for a fight, man. It's like, you know, being a soldier or a boxer or a warrior. You know, you know you're walking into a fight that you want to win. So you want the fight because you want to win. The bigger the fight, the bigger the win. Indeed, indeed. <clears throat> Talk also to what? enlightening the culture, you know what I mean? I got the Culture Vultures book coming out with my man Kenyatta. And, uh, you know, just exposing the people that have been exploiting our culture. Guys like, you know, Leo Cohen, Joey Ayi. You know, I like to call it Jay Jay direct. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm on radio. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, that too. So, enlightenment and, and, and empowering people is, I feel like, key giving them the information they need to do things on their own so they can have everything I got plus more and live that life, that indie life, you know, that you fight for. A lot, a lot of cats, uh, a lot of cats from Rockefeller, when you guys had the company, went their own ways and went independent. Jim Jones, Jim Jones was one of those guys, and I noticed that you still keep a cool relationship with him. Talk about that. I mean, you know, everyone does what they do, man. You know, and uh, everyone, I've always taught everyone how to get it on their own. So that's basically what happened. Everyone that's still doing it, you know, I'm not saying I'm responsible for it, but everyone has their own point of view and their own personalities. And, you know, they all do what they got to do. So, you know, Jim, Salute to Cameron, that. all of them, you know what I mean? I, my thing is not to keep people in my pocket. It's for people to be able to get out of my pocket and do whatever they want to do. Right. And do it on their own and be able to provide for them for their own. Like men in general don't want to be given things by other men. You know what I'm saying? You know, at least not any man that I know. They usually want to have their own kingdoms and have their own families to take care of. 
So, you know, I, what I do is make people independent because if they're not, they're just going to resent you. The more you give a man something, the more he hates you, uh, as ironic as that is. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. When you work for it, you appreciate it a little bit more. You know, just no man wants to be given anything, you know. And, you know, a man's job is to take care of his family, take care of his women, take care of his kids. Let's know? Let's go back about a month or so ago, man, with that controversial... In, informative breakfast club interview man you said some shit that cats are quoting all across the country i mean do you want to be an employee for the rest of your life right <laughs> yeah i mean you know like i said information is key you know and and i think the breakfast club is more of a, a place for gossip and making money off other people and that's just not what i'm about and i just felt like maybe the approach to me may have been where they received what they got, you know, a little enlightenment in the way that they probably weren't used to. But, you know, my agenda really is to empower the world, not to, you know, not to talk down to the world. But, you know, when someone's playing with me, you know, they're going to get played with back, to be honest. Right, right, exactly. Hip-hop is intelligent, and I think sometimes just because it's profitable, sometimes not to act intelligent, and usually the other people that make money from it, from us having controversy and beefing with each other, I just feel like, you know, we start, we need to, you know, beef with the right people, the people that are making us think that we need them, the people that are not about sticking together, that are about trying to make it feel like you have to be addicted to them or you need them to get from point A to point B. And, um, you know, let's choose, let's talk about some smart stuff. So being that enlightening things are in music right now, I think that's a good thing, man. I'm happy about that. Well, I'm, I'm glad it was well received and not misinterpreted. Definitely well received, definitely shared. Talk to us. Uh, talk to us about your um, your Blue Rock brand. <clears throat> well, you know, Blue Rock is a division in my company where you know, because I make music, I don't really monetize it like I used to. It's not my business model, but I, I never stop making music. I always have a studio next to me in any house I'm in, and sometimes I get with people that inspire me. So that's the division for the music part of my my business. But also, you know, I've been in North Carolina for a little while. I'm a man, Jay Black, who I grew up with. About 30 years, he's original Best Out, which is my crew since I was 16. And he's been through a lot. You know, we survived the war together. He was telling me there's a lot of talent out in North Carolina. So, you know, I was like, well, if you like it, I'll, I'll definitely stand behind it and, and co-sign it and show you how to do it correctly and give you my platform, you know, because that's what brothers do. And, you know, he's actually identified a lot of talent out here. So, you know, Blue Rock is really, and you'll be able to see my whole Blue Rock movement on the Dame Dash Studios um, website. Or, or, you know, like I said, my version of Netflix, where you'll be able to see all the music that I've been making, but just not putting out at a commercial level. But, you know, I got records with most Def and Black Keys and RZA and, you know, along with the new stuff that I'm doing, I got Cameron and A-Track, like all kind of things. But again, it, it just was hard for music to be a business that I was trying to monetize on a daily basis. I just more or less do it as I'm inspired, but that's what the Blue Rock division is in my company. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if y'all know what LVMH is. You ever heard of LVMH? LVMH is the umbrella company that owns Louis Vuitton. It owns Hennessy, Moet, Givenchy, um, Diane, um, uh, you know, a couple of a bigger Donna Karen, you know, very high-end luxury brands, liquor and fashion. So I'm just trying to be like that, like an LVMH, an umbrella company that makes liquor, that makes music, that makes fashion, that does art, but also makes movies and music, you know, and that's what I can do that a lot of other brands can't. I'm like a company that has companies. DJ Nightfall. And that's basically what I've been working on for the last five to six years, but doing it 100% on my own. I'm not using anybody's fund. I'm not using my celebrity and owning a percentage of it and, you know, being, you know, someone else being the boss. It just, it just was something I just had to do. Yeah, because I noticed, you know, uh, we did see you on Love and Hip Hop with Chrissy doing some fashion or you were consulting her concerning some fashion. So it's, it's clear. And I, was doing, I, was, I was like the little white guy behind Vampire Life. So, you know, I was doing the manufacturing well, you know, put we were the company. I was the funding and putting the, the, the design and all design team. Like I was doing what the other guys would be doing. So I was just advising them on how to do uh, <clears throat> uh, Lady Vamp and all that. But you know, like Dipset USA, a lot of what goes on. Like I, you know, Rachel Roy, I own that. A lot of fashion brands that are out, people don't know I'm behind it.
DJ Nightfall. And I've really been focused on directing a lot. You know, I, I, I've been, as, as business as I sound, I'm really more of a creative, and I find that I really like to just do things as I'm inspired, and that's what an artist does. And what I'm inspired to do in this moment creatively is make movies. So what I've been doing is making as many movies as I can. You know, I got the red can with the dragon, and I got really sophisticated at shooting and doing things at a level like, you know, Martin Scorsese or, or, or Quentin Tarantino. That's who I'm going after. But again, populating my own site. So Netflix has a bunch of other people's movies. Dame Dash Studios has a bunch of his own. Okay, okay. And you could go, you could go to, you could kind of sample them. I've been putting out like mixtape movies, which is the movie before the movie, just like a mixtape before an album. And you could go to Los Sides, uh d-studios.com you can order that and you could also go to two honorable d-studios.com and order that for like ten dollars directly from me but it, the real movie will be out like september october we can see it in the theater and see it on itunes and all that other stuff but first you could get it from me boom just like that yeah. just like that yeah. so <clears throat> so when do you think we'll get to see a state property reunion man I mean, you like, you know, I, that ain't for me, man. You know, like, that's on state property. Again, they got their identity. If they want to do it, they could do it. Um, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I'm more or less into the movies right now. You know, if there was a state property, it would be a state property three, which I plan on making. I mean, I've developed a lot of franchises, so there should be a paid in full two. Yeah. And a state property three. Right. And a paper soldiers two. Right. You know, with Kevin Hart and the death of the dynasty. So, for me, the evolution of Dame Dash is more or less you know, making the movies and, and taking the, the, the brands and the franchises that I've created and capitalizing off of them. You know what I mean? That's what you build franchises for. So that's more what I'm into, man. Like, you know, I, I put a lot of that stuff in my rear view. You know, it's like going, it's like a high school reunion for me. So, you know, it's on them. Right. Boom. And it's been like 10, 15 years since Rockefeller. You know, and I, I love that it's still very relevant and that people are so passionate about it. But, you know, it was a chapter in my life, and that chapter's kind of closed. You know what I mean? Did you reach out to Beanie when he was in the hospital? I mean, I speak, I've spoken to Beanie, you know, after he was in the hospital. You know what I mean? So, of course, I still care, but I ain't got no beef with Beanie. Oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Like, you know, I'm always in my regards. You know what I mean? So, you know, when anybody that I've come across in my life has a bad time, I always feel for them. I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I might not be the first person calling or the first person at the hospital, but definitely, I'm one of the people that are concerned. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Like, yes, it's sir. a big part of my life, you know. But again, it was 15 years ago. <laughs> 10, 15 years ago. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, like in the last in the last 10 years, you know, I've done opened up art galleries around the world. And, you know, I've done so many different kinds of albums with so many different kinds of people. And a lot of them haven't hit pop culture the way that, you know, Rockefeller did just because... I didn't have the tolerance to bring it there. I did it just because I was inspired. But, you know, if you look at, again, the Dame Dash Studios, you'll see every single thing that I've done. I started labels in Hong Kong, in, in, in Shanghai, in Beijing, in Thailand, you know, Jamaica. Like, I've been all these different places and made movies in all these different places and found talent. Right. You know what I'm but again, it's hard for me to push and make other people famous these days, especially men. I'm more into like, you know, being around women and investing more in women and showcasing their perspective at some point because without them, we ain't nothing. So Boom. I'm also enjoying my history as well, but I'm also enjoying, enjoying enlightening people on my, my perspective based on my experience. So I'm not just saying stuff because I, I, it's intuition. I'm saying it because shit has actually happened. And right. to watch out for them and how to get from A to B. On See, anything, I'm liking people sticking together. Boom. Message message got. Right. But Kanye became this very famous. Okay. And, you know, that's dope. And again, we, we, we all have our levels and our point of views. And we're all very like, you know, we are at the top of our own mountain. So right now, his focus, if you would ask him, you know, I see he does his fashion. That's what he wants to be. That's what he's doing. I want to be a director. So if I can use him and his name to bring some attention to what I'm doing, I'm going to do that because that's what brothers do. And that's what people do that have worked with each other. But also when he's inspired to do movies, then he also has a place to do that as well. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yes, sir. If right. it's something that he likes, and I could go ahead and, because I don't want to, I'm not doing that. I'm not running in front of cameras, and I'm not, you know, I'm not on it like that, and I haven't been in years, you know. I became more of a recluse as it relates to like publicity and all of that. That's why when you, when you get an interview out of me, you're going to get 
not only the stuff I'm promoting, but you're just going to get insights from me. You know what I'm saying? Just yes, because sir. I've lived a lot of life actual experiences. So, you know, Kanye got the cameras on him. And as a brother, if I need him, he's going to do that. That's, you know, that's what that's what we do for each other. The same way that I brought him in front of places, he could do that for me because I don't have a talent for it. Right. Right. So, so, the, so basically, I, I just stopped playing that game, man. It just got, it just got corny for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So check this out. Let's talk hip hop for a quick minute. Who is in Dame Dash's playlist right now? I like Kendrick Lamar. This new trap music that comes out, but I, I can't say that I'm loving it on a lyrical level. Right. I'm just loving it because it's affecting the rest of the world, and that's what's out. If I go into a club with my friends and I hear what's playing. You know, I'm a dance to it. It got beats, it got rhythms and stuff, but I come from a completely different space. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm listening to more stuff with live instrumentation. You know, in my travels with music, you know, if you look at the, I don't know if y'all know about that, but you, you ever know about that project I did, Black Rock? I'm familiar, not fully. Anybody know? Nah, y'all don't know it. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a rock and roll group. <laughs> it's a rock and roll group. And I put them with Most Def and Jim Jones and Foul March and RZA and Q-Tip and, and, you know, a couple of others that I respected, Billy Dance. And I had to make records with a live rock group so that, you know, when it's performed, it's performed with instruments. You know what I mean? So um, I, I like people that have a point of view and that are scared to be different and, and that are very lyrical. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that have taste and style. So, you know, I think that's what hip hop is. It's more than just music. You know, the music is about how you dress, about your perspective, your swag, you know, and, what you, and how you affect the rest of the world. What do you think about the way Nipsey Hussle presented his project by charging $100 and then $1,000? I, I mean, that, that's a very fashion model. Right? You know what I mean? It's a destination where, you know, you know your fan and you know your super fan and you just service that person and you they'll spend more than you know the average fan will and that's who you focus on so i think that's a it's a, it's a very snobby model and i'm a snobby guy so i respect that 500 you know what i'm saying i think it's a very forward way to do things i don't think the traditional way that hip-hop's been exploited is in the best interest of the artist i think when you do something mass everybody makes money but the artists you understand what i'm saying but yeah. when you focus and you know your consumer and you target them i think that's intelligent and you could also, and it brings a lot of swag, so I respect it. I'm actually, I'm prepping this movie I'm about to shoot called Mafietta, and it's starring delicious. <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh, you know, it's a, yeah, so, you know, you'll see that, and you, if you don't see it on television, you'll definitely see it on Dame Dash Studios. But, again, my thing is to make content, you know, new movies. I got classic movies that I've done made, like Paid in Full and all that, but all my movies are kind of better. Watch my evolution, watch my cameras my cinematography, my editing, everything that I'm doing, I'm just trying to really do things on a on a, a bigger level, but keep the integrity of it, keep the taste level of it. You know, I think my job is to make to go fly, lead by example. But again, I'm 44, so I don't want to be the flyest dude in hip-hop because I'm too old. I want to see a younger, a younger dude do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. What's your relationship like right now today with Jay? There is none. Boom. That's the end of that. <laughs>